Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now I've just finished painting this, which turned out quite nicely. So watch me paint it here. So without further ado, let's do some painting. Hello, welcome to my latest video. Hope you're keeping well and all that sort of jazz. Here we go again. Now this is a painting that I did during a live painting session um, a few weeks ago at the Ink Gallery. Um, I did about five paintings that night and this was the very last one at about half eleven midnight time. I was quite well oiled because I was plied with drink all through the night while I painted. So um, this one I'm going to paint over. I mean some of you might think it's uh, amazing but um, yeah it's, it's not bad but I want to do uh, something else on top of it and I haven't got any other wood or anything to paint on other than this so this has been selected for destruction. Anyway size wise it is 20 by 35 inches so it's quite big it's wood it's it's only very thin wooden panel i guess it's off the back of a cupboard or something like that which i relieved from the gallery um you know i'd, I'd taken three canvases along to live painting filled the three canvases and uh the staff at the gallery had to go upstairs and pinch some wood and this is one of them so anyway that's going to go. I'll get my palette camera turned on briefly to show you my three colours. And um, yeah, that's that. So I will see you in just a second. Right then, cam a la palette is on. Just get a decent pointer. Now on here, I've, I've found some push and blue, which I forgot I had. And just added a bit of titanium white. And it's really made the colour pop. It's a delicious colour. So I'm going to be using that one. Um, I'm going to use, um, I've mixed a sort of browny grey colour using um, what, whatever I always use every video. Um, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I've just added a bit of titanium white just to give a slightly lighter tone and of course titanium white there. I'm not going to use any medium at the moment um, I'm getting low on medium and it's the the painting underneath has got lots of medium anyway I use so I'm just going to do the the next layer with just paint out of the tube using it as sparingly as I can because I've not got a disposable income I can't keep buying paint but anyway that's a different story I'll get my face camera and my main camera back on and I'll see you in just a second. Right then, back in the room. Um, yesterday I painted, if I just reach over the camera and get it, I painted that. It's quite a nice um, um, battle cruiser, I suppose, come battleship in dazzle camouflage. So I'm, I want to do that again because it's been quite well received on Instabook and all that business. So I'll do it much bigger this time um, so yeah i'm pleased with it i like i'm liking the dazzle camouflage look so we shall do that or i shall do that and we'll see what we can do so i'm very pleased with that i'm going to do another one um it's sold already to my mum so my mum always buys me paintings but um i've said she can have that as a gift because we're going away on holiday and um, as a thank you i'm going to give her that but don't tell anyone um so anyway uh we'll get going i'm gonna get my flat brush um it's about an inch flat brush and we'll start going it's really scruffy because i've had it about a year it's one of my favorites at the moment uh, i'm just going to grab some of this uh push and blue mixed with titanium white and you know i'm gonna have the sea about a quarter of the way up, just covering that peak just there. <laughs> yeah, we'll be all keeping well and everything like that. It's uh, 
nice and autumny at the moment, it's a bit too warm for my liking. I don't like heat, as many of you know, as I was moaning about it. But yeah, I do like this time of year. It starts getting a bit cooler. The nights are drawing in. Oh, it's pretty horrifying what's going on um, in Gaza at the moment, in Israel. Oh, it really is. I'm not going to say any more about it, as it's uh, not, this isn't a political show. But um, yeah, just my thoughts with everyone involved over there. It's a horrible, horrible situation. Yeah, I've uh, been to work today, so thought come home, do a bit of painting. You know, I might add a bit of linseed oil, you know, this is going to take absolutely forever. Just helps the flow a bit. Just a bit. That's more like it, I'm getting somewhere now. I was talking to a friend of mine last night about ships and things, and it it reminded me of something. My great, I think it's two greats, great great granddad. He served on uh, the Aruba, which is uh, um, an ocean liner, um, turn of the century sort of ship. By turn of the century, I don't mean two thousand. I mean nineteen hundred, and. Um, he, he's, he's buried at sea, and um, we've still got the telegram, well, my mum has on her wall, um, you know, notifying the family of his death. And uh, he fell into a cargo hold on the ship. And you, you imagine a cargo hold, you know, you know good, good, decent drop. And, uh, yeah, he died. And buried at sea. I've been meaning to find out bit more about it, you know, where he was buried and, you know, it's a long shot, but I might be able to find the coordinates. Not to go and visit, because I haven't got a bloody boat or anything like that, but it'd uh, be just nice to know. Find out a bit more about it. So there we go, I've got a bit of a sea on the go already. This sky... It's not bad, I quite like it. I'm going to leave it, I reckon. It's uh, it's not bad. There's quite a bit of grain on it where the wood is. Quite a few lines and things, but I think that probably helps. don't know if the camera picks it up. But yeah, it's, it's not a bad sky. Um, I haven't got a reference photo on me. Uh, you, you normally use, use my phone as a reference photo, but of course I've got two phones videoing so no reference photo so i might just use that one so i'm just going to keep glancing at that and recreate that ship so i'll get my palette knife it's my favorite part this actually doing the ship i'm going to do the the darker tones first what i might do is I might add a bit more ultramarine blue to that brown to make it a bit greyer. Bear with me, I should have thought about this earlier. Hopefully I'll be able to do this ship in just one sitting. As me, my last ship I did was, um, well my last ships, plural, was uh, four videos. But um, hopefully I'll be able to do this in one go, we shall see. So, just a little bit of this grey colour, only a little bit on the palette knife, don't want to put too much on, just start doing the bow of the ship. Oh. 
Oh, it goes on nice for this uh, Lefranc bourgeois paint. It really is gorgeous paint. fascinated by shirts I had uh, you know the bath toys growing up you know your, your ships in the bath and I had um because it kind of dates me a bit but I, I had um, a yellow submarine you know a, a Beatles kind of bath toy I mean I'm not I'm not that old it was uh, it was in the you know very late 70s I'd that And I remember we moved house and this uh, yellow submarine went missing. It's, it's funny what you remember. It really is. And I think I was quite upset that my yellow submarine had gone missing during the, the, during the moving house. I think my mum might have bend it, I don't know. But I think I was quite upset. That was like 40 odd years ago and still remember, it is, uh, it is funny things you remember. Right, bit of a hull on the go. Not looking too shabby so far, it's a bit not there yet, obviously nowhere near. Right, let's a start. Just give me a pot knife a quick wipe. Right then, let's have a look. Now the sea is going to be a bit higher up. You know when uh, it's finished, so there won't be as quite as much hull. <laughs> right, let's start putting some guns and stuff on. And depending on where I put the guns and things on, it'll sort of govern how far the back bit of the boat goes, if you know what I mean. Or the ship, I should say. Start putting a bit of superstructure on. I remember, I, I think a couple of videos previous, I was talking about, perhaps even further than that, HMS Plymouth, um, which served in the Falklands War, and it became a museum ship, and it's now scrapped, which I was heartbroken about. But um, we went on that once, and there was, um, you know, I was on a like a you know, anti-aircraft gun or something like that. And it was deactivated, and you know, as a kid, I was looking around on it, and um, a Dutch frigate came past this ship, and it was moored on the River Mersey. Um, just across the river from Liverpool, we're in Wallasey. And this Dutch ship came past and all, all the crew were lined on the deck saluting HMS Plymouth, which was which was amazing, it was lovely to witness. You know. I I don't know if that's a, a Dutch naval tradition to salute um HMS, you know. Plymouth and other ships who've other ships of note, you know, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was uh, it was nice. Less than saluting me, of course, but I highly doubt it.
bear with me, I'm trying to concentrate what I'm doing. Looking all right so far. Now the Dazzle camouflage um, didn't actually camouflage the ship, that's not what it was for because you know they, they stuck, like, stuck, like, stuck out like a sore thumb. What the Dazzle camouflage did, I'm sure many of you know already, but for those who don't, was um, it kind of confused the submarine if you like, part of the targeting for the submarine to get the torpedo to hit. You had to know the direction it was going, the speed it was going, which angle it was coming at you, and the height of the masts from the waterline. And all that information was, you know, you'd have the periscope. All that information was transferred into um, sort of that targeting computer, which was a number of dials you'd twist, which told the torpedo which direction to go, which speed, how deep, how deep to go, etc. etc. Now this dazzle camouflage, it confused, you know, when you're looking through the periscope, you couldn't really tell, you know, the height of the masts, the direction it was going, the speed, etc. etc. Because all, all the you know the lines and things, it made it look like it was going a different direction and different speeds and you know you name it. So that's all that was for. You know, you can see the ship. But it was just to confuse the, you know, the targeting process. That's all that's for. But when I was growing up, I thought it was actual real camouflage. What um, some ships had occasionally was um, a fake bow wave, you know, to look like it was moving. So if it was ever stationary for whatever reason, the ship looked like it was moving. So, you know, the fire the torpedo, it would completely miss because the calculations will be out. I've got a photo which I'll, I'll put on here, actually. So, um, yeah, interesting. Read up on it. So yeah, that's Dazzle Camouflage. And there's a whole, whole range of amazing colours and patterns with Dazzle Camouflage. But um, it's obsolete now, you know. I, I suppose you might get some ships who have it. I don't know. I can't think. I, I suppose these days you don't even need to be able to see the ship to hit something, you know, with today's technology. Let's put that, uh, I suppose it's a funnel, just there, tower, whatever you want to call it. It's got something sticking out just there. There we go, what's that so far? Could go a little bit higher with that bit. Just put something there on the end. There we go. Could be gun jobs. Bear with me, concentrating again. something just there sticking up there we go right the back gun or guns just put that there and something just there as well it's quite straightforward to do with a little bit of practice you know just with a palette knife and a brush literally you need and two or three colours right 
we get in there? I might um, just sort out that end a bit there. There we go. Right. We'll start adding a couple of buns. Or a bit of bow, a couple of bowels, I should say. Put one just there. One there. And there. So it's going to be quite quick, I think. Right, the dazzle camouflage. Um, a bit of artistic license. I, I used um, a reference photo for my first ship, but that was all grey. And I thought, oh, I'll put dazzle camouflage on it. So there's a bit of artistic license. It's not perfect by any means. So, put a bit of titanium white on. Give that brush a quick wipe. A bit more there as well. So you see what I'm getting at? Not using much paint. If you use too much paint, it'll get muddy. use that blue as well because looking at photos you know because some of the colour photos um, they had a bit of blue as well as well as the blacks and the whites and the things like that Adding some whites further up the ship as well, just there for the guns and things. there yeah see it's not looking absolutely amazing yet but we'll carry on we'll see what happens it'll start to look good when I've got masts and wires and stuff on I think that's the plan Just add some less light grey that I mixed as well Right, you see what I mean by about, you know, once you move along the ship, you think, oh, it could do with being a bit longer down here. So I'll get my other palette knife. You know, you just get that sneaky suspicion that you just need to go a little bit longer. There we go. Not looking too bad. Oh, I've covered my palette knife in linseed oil. Let's give it a wipe, stick it in all. Just put something on the end there like that. It could be anything. Just a blob. Just 
bit more to turn in white. Right, must time. Um, do I get my, yeah, let me get my big part knife thing. Just add a bit of grey on the end. Oops. I dipped it in the linseed oil box. And... Right. Go up there, about that high, I think. Bit more, perhaps. There we go, just a touch, and the other one about there. Goody gum drops. Oh, it's so straightforward to do, it really is. There we go. I'll just put a couple of uh, bits and bobs on. That there. One of them there. Something there as well. Keep glancing over at that um, one I did yesterday. Right. A slightly longer palette knife, I think. Start adding on little wires Knife again. That's better. Going on a bit better. Quite faint some of them lines. It's all good. Yeah, it's starting to look like something. Don't know if you agree. Sort of nautical. I'll put a bit of a blob there. Could be anything. Something there as well. One there. What we get in there? Not bad. Right, let's give my pot knife a quick wipe. We have a ship just about. Let's go over these masts. Notice I'm using two hands, I've got a hand on the wrist because as many of my viewers know, I've got shaky hands. So for a little detail work, I've got to go like that. But, not 
to let something trivial like shaky hands stop me from painting. Getting there nicely. There's something there, a blob. And one there. And one there. Not bad at all. Right. I'm going to have a quick break. I'm going to make myself a coffee. I've been going nearly half an hour. And uh, have a coffee and just basic chill. Um, I won't film myself having a coffee and all the rest of it and going to the toilet. I'll, uh, I'll you know, literally be back in a second because I'm going to cut the video up and start again. So I will see you in just a second. Right, I'm back in the room. I'm armed with a cup of coffee. Or a quick slurp. Mm. It's still red hot as I have black coffee. So you need asbestos mouth to drink it. So anyway, I'll do... Uh, couple more lines. Just check the cameras are actually on. Yeah, they are. So otherwise I'll be talking to myself. Which, which I am. I'm pretty much talking to myself anyway, but a couple of lines again. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. I was going to say something quite profound, but I've forgotten what it is. Might come to me. Right, another bit of uh, titanium wine with my tiny little small power knife. Add some more of that um, lovely ultramarine blue down here. Not ultramarine blue, um, what am I on about? Prussian blue with titanium white mixed in. A bit of titanium white there, just sort that bit out. Something there. People quite often send me photos of various ships, you know, I don't know, HMS um, Arrow, or you know, they send me ships, so, oh, can you paint this? But the trouble is, if I try and paint it, it won't look like it. Because I use quite a bit of my imagination as well. And there's nothing wrong with that bit of artistic license. Because I'm not a um, naval architect or anything like that. It's not exact. There might be a few inaccuracies. It's just about enjoying yourself, having a good time with it. So there's no ship in particular, although I did use. Uh, um, reference photo. It was a World War One battleship that I used for this one. Put a bit of white just there, I think. something there, a few lumps and bumps, but yeah we're not looking too bad, that is how you paint a ship, it's not necessarily the textbook way of doing it, it's the way I do it, but it seems to work for me anyway. Keep on to lean back. I'm going to go backwards one day, but keep on to lean back just to get the whole perspective of my painting. So there we go. Right. We're almost there, I think. I just itch my chin. Um, where's my brush? There it is. I'll get my brush again. Start sorting this sea out of it. 
That'll give me brush a quick wipe. I'll tell you what, I'm going to get my other brush, which I've been I've left soaking, so I have to give it a quick dry. I just use washing powder in water and just soak it for a bit and it seems to break down the oil paint quite nicely. Right, let's put a bit of wake on here. Bear with me while I paint. Now just raise up the sea a bit, if you know what I mean. Just give it some distance over there. It gives the illusion of it, you know, the skyline disappearing off. Do like this push and marine, um, push and marine, push and blue. It uh, is a lovely colour. I'll have to get some more. I've got a small tube. I'll do the same again here, just give it a bit of distance. Use my finger as well. just makes the picture look a bit less flat Well, I'll just swap brushes from that small one to my wider one. Just give it another quick wipe with the kitchen towel. A bit more titanium white just there. Just go mad with it. Not worrying about details. Another quick wipe. I just get some more of this grey down here, just darken off a bit. A ship. Not bad, quick and easy. Might get my palette knife again with the handle snapped. Which happens. That put a bit of a wave there, a bit of a wake or whatever you call it. 
gently pull it on and uh, effective, a bit like me. Right, something else we can do. Um, I watched a video. Um, what did I watch? It was on Instagram. Um, there's somebody doing a seagull with a palette knife. Just a tiny palette knife like that. Just see if I can do it. Might not be able to. Might have to just scrub it. But I just practice. Just a suggestion of a seagull. Trouble is, I've got very shaky hands, can't really do it. <laughs> I suppose it's a seagull. <laughs> it looks a bit crap. <laughs> and what, what he then did was just put white tips on the wings. But, uh, you know, I've got very shaky hands. Need practice, but there we go. That's some crap looking seagull. <laughs> I'll get rid of that, I'll scrub it. <laughs> Bit more practice, I feel. Uh, but never mind. Adds to the sky, that's my excuse. <laughs> Ignore that, I'll. I'm not going to cut it out, I'll leave it in. <laughs> All good fun. Beauty about oil paint, as I often say, if you know if you make a mistake, you can just go over it and hide it, move it about, turn into something else. Whereas if you're using um, acrylic or any water-based paint or whatever, it uh, it dries quickly, so you haven't got much time to ooh, quickly make a change. Uh, I wonder what. Oh yeah, we need. What we do need is a bit of smoke all important so I'm just going to use just the tip of my finger just to whack a bit of smoke on coming out of the funnel Using a variety of colours for that smoke, I'm using my dark grey, and uh, there's a bit, a little bit of blue gone in there as well, and some light grey. Just gives it a bit of depth, I think. Anyway, my humble opinion. It's just so easy doing smoke. You know, if I can do it, so can you. You know, you can do the whole ship. And again, if I can do a ship, so can you. Fingers are a great tool for painting. You'll get absolutely covered. And I do suggest using gloves. As uh, an artist friend reminded me once. But... I've run out of gloves, so he's using my bare hands. So anyway, one ship, dazzle camouflage. I don't know whether to put something in the background over there, I don't know. I haven't decided. But yeah, there we go. That is how you do it. Quick and easy. Um, yeah, do it within an hour. So I hope you like. Let me know in the comments. Um, I do one or two bits off camera. But um, other than that, I think we're done. So thank you so much for watching. It does mean a lot. Thank you for all of your love and support. Um, don't forget, as I quite often say, I'm on YouTube now. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Someone suggested um, 
tactic or TikTok or whatever it's bloody called. But I don't know, I might, I might go on it one day. I might... Uh, but it, it just means extra palaver, putting stuff, more content out on that as well as everything else. Um, I'm also on my website, johnkid.co.uk. So don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you want to get notificationated, hit that bell thing. And uh, that's how it's done. Very simple and easy. So, um, yeah, if you haven't painted before, go for it. Get some oils, a few cheap brushes, off you go. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.